So in today's video, I'm gonna cover the five different branches of the military, the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Space Force. So I will say that I am currently in the Navy, but I'll try to be as unbiased as possible. First, I'm gonna talk about the Army. Okay, we are the beneficiaries. We get a guaranteed check for eight years and a special skill. A special skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Here we go. Land combat missile op. Opportunities. Tactic. It's the largest branch in the military. It has 472,000 active duty service members. So let's talk about the Army's operational tempo. So they normally go on 12 month deployments and they typically go to countries that are landlocked. There are Army bases throughout the United States. Alaska, Florida, Georgia, New York, Kentucky, Colorado, California, you name it, there's probably gonna be an Army base there. There are also US Army bases located overseas in Belgium, Germany, Japan, Italy, and Korea. Now let's talk about sea power. What do you think about our boat, Pascal? I feel I need a tetanus shot just from looking at it. The only thing holding her together are the bird droppings, sir. The United States has the largest Navy in the world with 336,000 active duty personnel. So let's talk about the Navy's operational tempo. You switch between sea and shore duty every couple years, and when you're on sea duty, you're more likely to go on deployment, which typically lasts about nine months. You can also get stationed overseas in Rota, Spain, Sigonella, Sicily, Okinawa, Japan, and Guam, just to name a few. Another thing to consider when you're thinking about which branch to join in the military is how much time you're gonna have for other things, like college, for instance. I think the Navy definitely ranks higher in the totem pole than most other branches in this respect, just because of the sea to shore rotation. All right, let's talk about the Air Force. Whether it be the barracks facilities, the hotels, the gym, or the dining facilities, everything on an Air Force base is gonna be top notch. Your operational tempo is gonna be dependent on what your MOS or your job is specifically in the Air Force, but on average, the Air Force deploys a lot less than the other branches, so that's gonna leave a lot more time for family, college, whatever else you got going on. In terms of size, the Air Force is gonna rank third as far as manpower is concerned, as they have 320,000 active duty personnel. All right, let's talk about the Marine Corps. I will PT you all until you fucking die. I'll PT you until you're asshole for sucking buttermilk. Before the creation of the Space Force in late 2019, the Marine Corps is the smallest of the branches with only 182,000 active duty personnel. Though the Marine Corps is its own branch of the military, its administration falls under the Department of the Navy. So if you decide to become a Marine, you can expect that you're gonna work closely with Navy personnel or even on a Navy base. As far as operational tempo is concerned in the Marine Corps, you're definitely gonna be right up there, if not higher than the Army. You're gonna be deploying quite a bit. Similar to the Navy, most Marine Corps bases are gonna be located on the coast of the United States. And that just makes sense because the logistics and deployments you're gonna be going on Navy ships to get to wherever you're going. All right, now onto the Space Force. Sir, I need to see some Space Force ID to let anyone inside. Here is my Space Force ID. Now it's such a new branch of the military, I can't really talk too much on quality of life or operational tempo, but I will say that it's super expensive to do anything regarding space, so I don't see deployments to Mars or the moon being that frequent, so I think you're good. <laughs> As for now, there are no official Space Force bases. They do all their operations off of Air Force bases, but their budget did just increase by $15 billion, so we'll see. On to the Coast Guard, Semper Paratus, or Always Ready. They were created on the 4th of August in 1790. They currently have roughly 48,000 members between their active and reserve components. The mission of the United States Coast Guard is to ensure our nation's maritime safety, security, and stewardship. The Coast Guard is the only service in this group that is technically not military. This is primarily for two reasons. The first being the funding source and how Congress allocates money, and because their purview is more that of a law enforcement agency. The Coast Guard is there to protect America's waterways. They take this concept of protection very broadly. As I said, they perform a law enforcement type duty, such as drug interdiction, but a major part of what they do is to protect the lives of people at sea and on the waterways inside of America. 
They also do have assignments overseas, but those are less common. Each branch of the military has its own culture, its own mission set, operational tempo, and locations. It's really up to you to make your own hierarchy and decide what, what is most important to you.